Hey bassists, today we're going to be working on an all-time classic. It sounds just like Twinkle Twinkle Little Star, but this one's called Ba Ba Black Sheep. Are you ready? Let's do this. This arrangement of the piece is in G major. So first thing I want to do is run through our G major scale together. We'll set our tempo to 85 and we'll play in half notes, starting on G, second finger on the E string, and going all the way up to our open G. Here we go, G major in half notes. We'll repeat G at the top. One, two, three, four. If you had trouble with that F sharp on D string, fourth finger, make sure you're holding down your first, second, third, and fourth finger all together. When our fingers work together, they're a lot stronger, and our pinky really can't do much alone. I'll go ahead and play through the piece one time. I'll play it at our tempo of 85 equals our chord note. Some things to listen for. I'm going to try to make my chord notes pretty full sounding. My eighth notes, however, will be short and separate. And of course, my half notes need to be held out for full value. Two beats. Let's give it a try. One, two, three, four. Let's take a look at some of the challenges we'll be facing here. Already in measure one, we are skipping a string in our string crossing. That means we're jumping from the E string, G, second finger, to an open D. If you're not used to doing this, it's going to feel a little funky. So just keep an eye on your bow. Play the G. Oh, actually it's going to be two G's, so down, up, and then right here where you're almost on the frog on the E string. You have to move over to the D without scrunching up on the A. Oops, nope. Right on the D, and ready. So imagine you're just slightly hopping over the A. Not a big leap, just a little tiny hover to get to the D. Because if not, you're going to get that weird scrunch sound. We don't want that. Let's talk about eighth notes. Okay, I'll stop singing, but we have to keep our eighth notes short. Now with bass, this is always a little bit more work than with any other string instrument because once our strings get vibrating, it's hard for them to stop. So when we're keeping eighth notes short, we just have to think about keeping the arm relaxed, but a little bit firm and just stopping the motion of the arm as opposed to trying to choke the sound by squeezing the bow. We'll just stop the motion of the arm like this. If I'm playing my E, if my arm is relaxed, then the weight of my arm will be sitting on the, on the string through the bow. That means when I stop, that weight will just stop the string. Once again, I'm not squeezing. I'm not pushing down. I'm not kicking my bass angrily to get it to stop. I'm just stopping the motion of my arm. Now, as we get faster, we don't want to think about stopping faster. We just want to think about making the motion smaller. So how little can you move your arm and still get a sound out of the string? Was an exaggeration but you see how short we can get it so practice moving tiny amounts on the string and keeping your arm weight going down into the instrument the other challenge of this piece is just playing those half notes long enough 
it's very tempting to want to cut it short because it gets uncomfortable or we're not sure exactly how to keep the sound going. So we have to practice maintaining a sound on no matter what part of the bow we're at. If I start at the frog and move to the tip, I need to rotate my arm just a little bit to keep that pressure on the string and keep the string vibrating. If not, it'll just disappear like a flower in the wind. Come back, come back. No, we need to twist the arm just a little bit, not twist, pivot the arm into the string towards the body to get that sound to continue. All I'm doing really is this. Just a little bit of that forearm and shoulder twist to push my finger onto the bow and down into the string. When I go from chip to frog, I have to relax and go the other way just a little bit. on our C, we end up, after that long half note, having to start the A string from the tip of the bow. The key is to simply set the bow on the string before you start moving in the opposite direction. I set the bow. I'm pretty bitten into the string. If I wiggle, I can actually wiggle it because I'm putting a little bit of pressure. That way when I start it, I already have a firm grip on the string. If I try to move before I have that firm grip, my bow will lose control and will get that scrapey sound. So pull, set, and turn the other way. You're actually coming to a complete stop and then pushing. It's just so fast that you might not notice it. challenges of the piece. So let's play it one more time, this time at a slightly slower tempo of 80 BPM. One, two, one, two, three, four. Keep an eye and an ear on your note links, keep practicing, and of course, keep listening to music. And I'll see you in the next video.